from Under the Pillow. It's an animation documentary. Very cool concept. Uh, what were anybody's initial thoughts of this? Uh, this uh, kind of a drawings from the from the from the kids and kind of like making it kind of like a go in motion. I love that it was led by children. Like the inter like the initial introduction was from the filmmaker, but like the whole movie was narrated by a child, and like the images were all child directed, which I thought was very um, like a very new idea in terms of movies and documentaries because they're often yes they're often based on children's lives, but they're not they don't involve the children in the making. And I think this one did a very good job doing that. And you're, seeing, you're seeing the kids' emotions of what they're feeling at that age and what they're, they're some of them are realists too. Like, they, like the one kid's comment about, I like watching these movies, but I know Superman and Spider-Man are not gonna come yeah. save me. Like they're, they're already in the reality of what their life is gonna turn out to be, which is sad in a way, but it, it's also real at the same time. I, I liked it. I, I thought it was a very interesting uh, look at the inside, uh, you know, sort of mirroring the, the, the inside look at the way a child thinks. And the way, because we don't think that, that way, you know, we're very, uh, very much, uh, you know, more focused and, and driven. Uh, and so when you get that, but it, it's still. Had trouble uh, with the fact that it just seemed very disjointed. You know, it was hard for me to to watch from that perspective, but I found it fascinating to uh, to not be able to follow it in a in a real sense that way. Yeah, it's, this is very a very unique film. It's, you you won't see a film like this for a long time. Go ahead. But it invented its own structure as it went on, right? Because right. it, yeah, it was disjointed, but there were moments that happened early in the narration that we were that we came back to and then we got to see more about that little piece of story and the, I'm thinking the staircase story that started it and then we get the payoff at the end with that but there was lots of little pieces like that where you were listening for a ch particular child's voice to hear where their story uh, continued and where it ended. I thought that was a, a terrific a way to tell a story spread over time and uh, not go in a kind of linear uh, standard way. So. And they could also have gone like in a real kind of idealistic, kind of like dreamy state where they kind of stay, they, even though it's this is an animation film, it's like and it was about the kids' imaginations, they really stayed in the reality of the world that the kids were in at the same time, which is kind of magnificent, like, not to sound like, you know, flaky about it, but it's kind of brilliant in, a way, in its own way where they, it's, there's so many, like you said, so many different narrations, so many different themes going on, but it's very much based in, in the reality that that's what I felt. A bit more about the structure that unfolded, how at the end of the film we kind of get this wider perspective and we go outside the, the building and the world of these children and we see this rather large, large seeming city that's bustling here and then again we have the soundscape coming in with the construction and the traffic. So there's all these um, people that almost are, well not almost, but are completely unaware and it was interesting for myself to watch the film unfold, not really knowing who these children were, and then to read at the end that, as far as I know, that wasn't divulged before the the end that they had AIDS, and the story about the cloth becomes really profound because you have these children who are they're they're terminally ill. I guess they may last for a few years with some help. They're going to die, and unlike the the fairy tale story where the cloth. Uh, top of the entire town. You kind of get this reality check where, yeah, the kids are going to die and 99% and of the people in the city are just going to keep building buildings and honking their horns at one another and complaining and, and, and not complaining, but you know, they're just going to go about their lives. And then on the other side of the city, you see the castle with, with the king and the queen. It was, I don't know, it was kind of like fading in and out of like a reality and then back into this world of the children and these children who are, yeah, so sick to make something so beautiful and so really light, quite lighthearted for the most part was, was a really interesting film. Yes, well, I would just I would just say again that it sort of makes the point that everybody's got their HIV, right? Everybody, and it allowed us to tap into the universality of that experience. You gave the reveal at the end, which is great, but you know, it was, and as this person said up front, you know, the structure served that universality. 
in the same time, it's like if anybody who's spent time with people who are fatally ill and they're from, from whatever disease, you talk to them and they all want to tell their story. They all want to like leave their mark in whatever way. And these kids, you know, left their mark with this film, which is great. Because we don't know where these kids are now. Maybe some of them are dead. Maybe, like, you know, sad to say. But they left their mark and maybe that, that's sort of what, if you spend time with people who will pass away, that's, that's what everybody kind of wants to do in a way.